Welcome back guys to another one. Today let's talk about air cooling in small form factor builds. More specifically this time, of course, about the Dana 4 SFX. As you know, this case only supports coolers up to 47 mm tall, which means that doesn't leave us with many options to choose from. By now, I either have to use a, either a low power TDP CPU, like I have the Ryzen 7 1700, and I can usually combine it with the Noctua L9A or L9I for the Intel CPUs. But things are about to change, guys, because today Alpenphone has kindly sent us over the Black Ridge, which is very special, as I'm about to show you, because this one not only it fits perfectly the Dan A4, also it has been made in collaboration with Dan cases, so it's specifically made for this case. Plus, you can use it in any other small four factor build, but you can install a 120 mm fan underneath because everything so far only uses 92. So, spoiler alert, guys, this is really good. In the intro I keep mentioning about the Dan A4 SFX case because this heatsink was made in collaboration with Dan cases. So I just love when companies work together to give us such a specialized product. Let's get the price out of the way. It's 40 quid from Overclockers Co UK or 43 euros from Case King in Germany. That is roughly 51 US dollars which is a really good price considering that the Noctua L9A now also in black is 50 US dollars or 40 for the regular one while the Cryorig C7 in graphene is 60 quid, or 77 US dollars. Spec-wise it offers 6 heat pipes at 6 mm each, when the competition doesn't even have anything beyond 4, and it has such an impressive aluminium fin density like anything I've ever seen. Also everything is in black as per the name suggests, making this one sexy and impressive CPU heatsink. In the box you get a nice display of all the necessary parts. It's very easy to install, just secure in the corresponding side brackets for either AMD or Intel small sockets and then just screw everything from the back of the motherboard. Not even a backplate is needed. It also comes with the extra fan clips for either 15 or 25mm thick 120mm fans. So far what I love most about this cooler is the versatility as in options for what fans to use because this will dictate how much TDP it can handle. Stock it's good for up to 95 watts of TDP because it comes with a 28,000 RPM Alpenphone branded 92 slim fan. In this form you must use RAM no taller than 33 mm. The team group Vulcan Zs I have or like the Corsair LPX Vengeance are perfect. Then as a reference the Trident Z RGB ones are way too tall at 44 mm tall. Now let's say you will mount this fan in a case that accepts more than 47mm, not a problem at all. Slap on the top either a slim or regular 25mm thick 120mm fan while keeping the stock 92 fan underneath. As for a last trick up its sleeve, which is the main attraction of today's video, is the fact that you can mount a slim 120mm Noctua A12 fan only if you get VLP memory, as in very low profile. These need to be under 19mm tall. Then this combo is special because it gives you the ability to maintain the 47mm total height clearance for the Dan A4 SFX case. Now you see what I mean by versatility. Of course veteran Dan A4 case builders we know that this level of compactness demands extra patience and awareness when it comes to selecting parts and then finally building it. I can only speak for my motherboard which is the Asus Trix B450i which also is identical layout to the X47 variant. To use the Black Ridge with a 92mm fan you need to remove the M.2 heatsink because it will basically interfere with the fan. It's not a big of a deal since you can still populate that M.2 slot, but again just be aware and do your research depending on what motherboard you want to use. But 95% of the time you should be fine. So this is how it looks if you plan to use it with any slim 92mm fan and regular low profile RAM. But if you want to use the 120mm fan like I did, the best one I found is the Noctua A12X15. Besides the VLP RAM, you will need to sandwich the fan between the PCIe riser and the heatsink itself. At first glance I thought I would never make it work since the fan is almost directly over the top of the PCI slot. 
basically you have to pull the heatsink a bit on the outside and then just slide in the fan from up top. With some extra patience I think then you can mount back the wire clips but as is it will never move not even under 100% RPM. Mind you this will make the heatsink stick out a bit but the side panel will still close. So I can't believe I managed to make everything fit and let's see if it was worth the extra hassle to have the 120mm fan on. As for testing we will go over an intricate list of variations because I discovered that the way you orientate the fan to blow air has a massive influence on temperatures. For example the stock fan as it is is mounted to exhaust air outside of the case. So all of the tests are done inside the Dan A4 SFX V4 with the side panel on, then we have an extra Noctua 92mm fan down as an intake, the room temperature is at 20 degrees and the CPU I'll be using in stock form is the Ryzen 1700 which is a low power 65W TDP 8 core system threads. Then I will overclock it at 3.7GHz for 1.25V. We will compare the results of the Black Ridge against the Noctua L9, then change out the fan of the Black Ridge for the one found in the Noctua L9 series, the 0.21 amp ones. Basically for each fan swap or flip I had to take the whole computer apart. <laughs> oh boy. So here are the results in ADA64 left running for at least 2 minutes with the fan set on auto RPM fan curve. What you just saw was the 120mm fan on as an intake which is the best setup of everything. What you heard is what my camera picked up at around half a meter and the CPU was overclocked. Have you saw the temperature 68 degrees C? That's totally insane. And on the top side it is yeah like you heard pretty silent even with an overclocked CPU. As you can see any fan that is placed as an intake will produce the best cooling results but as you will see will make more overall noise. Vice versa with the exhaust ones with the exception that the 120mm it fails so dramatically. The stock 92mm fan is good enough to get the job done but most likely you are better off if you upgrade to the 92mm Noctua one. To get the most out of this cooler at 47mm you will need the slim 120 Noctua fan or any other alternative you will find which will give you the best results as an intake orientation from any point of view. Gaming wise there is nothing to worry about temperatures at least in this title Assassin's Creed Odyssey which can use all of the 16 threads. Again the 120 slim as an exhaust is curiously underperforming. Finally the noise test shows us the complete picture. Apparently it's very hard to beat the noise and footprint combo from the Noctua L9A so it takes second place as the overall most quiet solution. Curiously all of the 92mm fans set on intake produce the most noise while the exhaust ones are quieter. The stock Black Ridge fan because it spins the fastest out of everything naturally makes the most noise output despite the fact it's a fluid dynamic bearing according to the manufacturer but still it's basically a jet engine, have a listen for yourself. So the conclusion is if you are willing to use the full potential of the Black Ridge in a case like the Dan 4 SFX, get yourself a slim 120mm fan, some VLP RAM and then you can even comfortably overclock your CPU while finally being silent. Just do a bit of research to make sure your motherboard will accept this nice combo. This being said I can easily conclude that this is the best air cooler so far available in this particular setup for the Dan A4 case that I have ever tested. So there you have it guys, thank you again for watching and if you want me to test this against the Ryzen 2700X just comment down in the description. Until the next one, Alex out.